What's up guys? Welcome to CryoFX YouTube channel. My name is Chris and today's video is going to be on how does a CO2 cannon work? If you're wondering how it works, you're in the right place. So I want to clarify something before we get into this video here. Some people call a CO2 jet a CO2 cannon. There's a whole different video separate just for that. Link in the description and that video will discuss how does a CO2 jet work. And we go inside, we talk about how it works because these are CO2 jets, actual stage mounted jets. Now, if you wanna know how a CO2 cannon works and you're referring to a handheld CO2 cannon, something like this, this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's get in and talk about how a CO2 cannon works. Now, what is a CO2 cannon? This is a CO2 cannon. These are handheld CO2 cannons, also called handheld cryo guns, also called handheld CO2 jets, anything handheld, but this is a CO2 cannon. You have your handle or your main apparatus, you have your nozzle that's here, and of course, what you don't see yet is the hose. So, and of course the tank. Don't wanna forget the tank. Without the tank, really can't use the gun. <laughs> so, getting right into this, Internally, these all operate the same way. All this is, is a valve. This is a handheld CO2 valve. Here's another option from CO2 cannon. This is the main apparatus, like I said before. Now, when you take the external casing away, what do you have inside? You have this. All this is, is the internals to this. This is literally the same thing. Same thing goes in here. Now, the difference between some of these is the seats and seals inside may be slightly different, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to open one of these up and we're going to show you inside. But before I do that, I want to explain exactly how this works. And this is actually the CO2 cannon main part. And how this works is this. The liquid CO2 comes in through the bottom. It stops right here as this is the valve. When you press the handle of it, it presses this little pin. The pin presses inward, which presses a ball bearing outward and allows the liquid CO2 to flow up through this top portion and out through the nozzle, wherever you want to go. Okay, guys, so here's the close-up of actually the inside part, the actuator, if you will, <laughs> of how a CO2 cannon works. Now, when I unscrew this back portion here, what we're going to see on the inside is a ball bearing, this, and of course, a spring. And then you have your back. I don't know what the exact terminology for this is, but you get the point. This screws onto the back, and this actually seals it, but allows you to get access. So some of the problems we see here is this ring may not be able to handle the liquid CO2 or the ring's broken. That could create a leak. Also, flipping this spring, if you have a leak in, in your CO2 cannon, sometimes... You wanna just open this up like this and flip the spring around and then put the ball bearing back on and then put it back together. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you inside here, if you could see that, all that ball bearing does is block that entire hole that you see on the downside inside of that cylinder. And what happens, as I explained earlier on the video, is we're gonna do this for right now. So I don't have my screwdriver handy, so I'll use a pen. You press this piston right here with the handle, the piston pushes in, and it pushes this ball bearing against the spring, allowing flow and allowing this opening on the inside to open up and liquid the flow from here up through the top. And of course, when you let off on this, that spring pushes that ball bearing back, and of course, the ball bearing seals the entire hole. So what's happening is this. So when it pushes out, flow can go through. When it's in, it blocks the hole. Simple concept, very rudimentary, but this is how you would go ahead and access this internal part. And of course, when you put it back together, you want to screw it all the way back in. And I'm not going to be using pliers on this, but you would use pliers to screw it all the way back in. And that is how the inside of a CO2 cannon works. Back to the other video. So in essence, in very simplistic form, that is how a CO2 cannon works. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna showcase this CO2 cannon. This is a cryo CO2 cannon. 
Little bit different build, same internals, a little bit more robust. Here's the nozzle, you see it. This one is a CO2 cannon one. Nozzle's not on here, but imagine a nozzle being right here, you get the point. Now, how the work, the bottom of these, the hose connects to the bottom. You can either have a quick disconnect, which this is a quick disconnect piece, as you can see here, or you can have a direct connection where it, the hose screws right into the bottom of it, or you can have a swivel fitting. I will be the first to tell you that the quick disconnects are great because they can be disconnected when it's not under pressure. You don't ever want to disconnect it when it's under pressure, but the best part about these is you can disconnect it from the hose and put it away. So you can have this and you can have the hose completely separate and they can actually be coiled up together where you don't have the hose getting all bent and all jacked up. Well, the downside to it is these inhibit the flow of the CO2. So when you get into the nuts and bolts and if you want the larger stream of the two or if you don't want your flow inhibited or you don't want problems potentially down the road, then I would not recommend these quick disconnects. These quick disconnects themselves are going to be problematic. And the reason being, they inhibit the flow. As you can see here, that's on a whole nother video. That's right, guys. For a bonus here, we're throwing in some live footage of what one of these CO2 cannons looks like. Again, live at a prom, as you can see. Just therefore, we don't get any comments to say, we didn't see you use it. We didn't see it in action. So again, this is what it looks like when it's actually in use. Regardless of what you call it, a CO2 cannon, a uh, cryo cannon, whatever it is, back to the video. So there you have it, guys. We quickly covered, <laughs> quickly covered, we quickly covered how does a CO2 cannon work? Not how does a CO2 jet work, because like I said earlier, that was another video, but we covered how does a CO2 cannon work, and I hope that you have some more insight to these. If you have any questions, put those in the comment section below. We'll be glad to answer those because that's what we do on this channel. And of course, the subscribe button and like button to hit those notification bells so when we do new videos, you're the first to know about it. And we do do some giveaways in our community section, but you only get notified of those if you are subscribed to the channel. So if you subscribe and the notification bells, you'll be notified about that. Until the next video, this is Cryo Effects. Thanks for watching.